we've really got to work on your solo gliding there, bud. Toothless. You're pouting, big baby boo. Well, try this on. Oh, you feeling it yet? Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't hurt a one-legged. Hey, everybody. This last weekend, I was fortunate enough to score a pass for an advanced screening of How to Train Your Dragon 2. I'm sure you're all quite jealous. Oh yeah, it'll be out in a few days, relax. But anyway, um, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. I really enjoyed the first movie. I it, liked the characters and the voice acting was top-notch, especially Gerard Butler as Stoic the Vast. Love that character. Uh, I like the various designs of all the dragons, a lot of creativity involved there, and the animation overall was top-notch. It's uh, the kind of quality you usually don't see outside of Pixar. And yeah, overall, a very solid film. And How to Train Your Dragon 2 takes all of that and just cranks it up to the next level. This is exactly what a sequel should be. It is fantastic, and I cannot recommend it enough. In fact, this is probably the best movie I've seen so far in 2014. The story picks up about five years after the events of the first movie, and humans and dragons are living together quite happily in the small village of Burke. Uh, the sheep are not terribly happy, as they are apparently pawns in various dragon sporting events, uh, one of which is kind of a cross between basketball and Quidditch, and the sheep are basically the tokens in that game. They are not amused at all. But, uh, yeah, apart from the sheep, everyone seems to be quite happy. Uh, they have occasional problems with fires, which is a consequence of owning fire-breathing pets, but they've gotten pretty good at fire control, so overall, life is good. Uh, Hiccup has grown into a respectable young man since the first movie, and spends a good chunk of his time with his new hobby, map-making. He and Toothless take many journeys during the day to various islands surrounding Burke and mapping out the territory. And he's been doing this really for a couple of reasons. One, because he enjoys it, but also because he's been trying to spend as much time away from his father as possible since he's been putting pressure on his son to accept more responsibility and eventually prep him for becoming chief someday. And Hiccup is not entirely certain if he's really chief material and if he's ready to handle all of that responsibility. But of course, he's going to have to handle it someday because Stoic the Vast is not going to be around forever. And one day, while Hiccup is out on one of his little map-making routines, along with his girlfriend Astrid, they come across a dragon trapper named Eret, son of Eret, who is the greatest dragon trapper in all the land, or at least thinks he is. Really, he's kind of a goof, but... Anyway, they encounter him and discover he has been trapping dragons for a man called Drago Bloodvist. Which is the most awesome name for a villain that I have heard in quite some time. Drago Bloodvist. There is no way to say that name without inspiring fear in someone. There's... That there isn't. Try it. Yeah, you can't do it, can you? No. Doesn't matter how you do it. Fear. Drago, once upon a time, had a... Um... How can I say this without giving too much away? He had a bad experience with the dragon. A very bad experience. A very traumatizing and disarming experience. And... Since that day, he has been on a quest to learn how to gain control over as many dragons as possible, and he has been slowly building an army, which he eventually hopes to use to conquer the world. Of course. And upon finding this out, Hiccup decides he wants to try to reason with Drago and hopefully talk him out of his world-conquering ways, but... Stoic the Vast, his father, doesn't think that's such a good idea, as he has encountered Drago before, and knows that he is a man who cannot be reasoned with. But Hiccup decides he wants to try anyway, and flies off on his own, and eventually, purely by accident, he encounters another dragon rider named Valka, who turns out to be his long-lost mother, who was taken from their family 
uh, by a herd of dragons many years ago and presumed dead, but in fact she's been alive all this time and living quite happily in this little hidden dragon sanctuary out in the middle of nowhere. And this eventually leads to a very heartfelt family reunion, which was a very touching scene. It shows a rather soft side of Stoic the Vast that you didn't really see in the first movie. And yeah, it's, it's one of the better moments in the movie. Just, I really like that scene. And at first it looks like all is going to be well and good, but then Drago eventually tracks them down to this little hidden sanctuary and attacks. And all of the dragons in this sanctuary, as Valka explains, are controlled by this huge freaking alpha dragon, this big Godzilla-sized beast with tusks about the size of 747s. And all the various dragons are under his control. But somehow Drago has brought his own alpha dragon under his control, and ultimately they end up clashing, and that's when all hell breaks loose. As far as the voice acting goes, I thought the returning players all did a very good job. Uh, Jay Baruchel and America Ferreira in particular did a very good job as Hiccup and Astrid and bringing these characters from their teenage years from the first movie into young adulthood. And uh, Gerard Butler is once again awesome as Stoic the Vast. Uh, the various side characters, uh, like all of Hiccup and Astrid's friends, uh, all do a very good job. Kristen Wiig, as Roughnut in particular, really gets a chance to shine as when they first encounter Eret, son of Eret, she immediately starts crushing on him hard, and every time she spots him, she just starts drooling over the guy, and the camera slowly zooms in on his big, beefy arms and leads to a lot of funny moments between those two. Uh, as far as the newcomers, Kate Blanchett does a fantastic job as Valka, uh, showing you know, both a strong warrior personality, but also the gentle, caring side that she shows as Hiccup's mother. Uh, Kit Harrington as Eret, son of Eret. Uh, <laughs> he really surprised me. Uh, I know uh, I've heard a lot of people kind of crapping on his acting in Game of Thrones. I've never really thought he was a bad actor, but he is, he is kind of a one-trick pony, I suppose. But... You know, he may have found his real calling as a voice actor. I thought he was very good in this. Uh, honestly, I think I like his voice acting better than his real acting. And then we have Jimon Hansu as Drago Bloodvist. First of all, I didn't even realize it was him until I saw his name in the credits. Uh, it sounds nothing like him at all. And with that by itself isn't the problem. But the problem is, I think he's trying just a little too hard to sound evil. Like, he's almost getting into Christian Bale Batman territory. Honestly, it's it's not quite that laughable, but it, it did kind of take me out of the character just a little bit. Uh, just probably could have toned it down a bit. But, yeah, apart from that, voice acting was solid. Um, the story is definitely a bit darker in this movie than it was in the first one. Uh, first one was... Overall, pretty upbeat and really didn't have much of a villain to speak of. There was, of course, that big, gigantic super dragon that they had to contend with, but that was more of a conflict than a villain, really. This one does have a villain in Drago Bloodfist, and, you know, apart from the voice being a little too over the top, pretty solid villain. And, yeah, this, uh... When shit goes down in this movie, it really goes down. And... Uh, this movie goes in a lot of directions that I really didn't think it would have the balls to go in, especially regarding the fate of certain characters. And not going to say any more in the interest of avoiding spoilers, but damn, I did not think it was going to go there. Uh, but in spite of it being, you know, darker than the first movie, there are still plenty of comedic moments and still plenty of sweetness in there. Uh, a lot of it's uh, comes from, of course, the comic relief side characters, especially with Rough Nuts' crush on Eret, and plenty of happy family moments with uh, Stoic, Valka, and Hiccup. And, of course, there's the various dragons, especially Toothless, who is really just like a big dog in this movie. Uh, a dog that can 
fly and shoot bolts of dark energy, but... So not your typical dog, but still. Uh, yeah, and his interactions with uh, the other dragons, especially with Valka's dragon when they first meet, are a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Valka's dragon, I forget that, that dragon's name, but seems kind of annoyed with Toothless at first, but eventually they warm up to each other. The visuals in this movie are amazing. Cannot say enough good things about them. Everything is bright and colorful. We have even more creative designs for all the various dragons that Hiccup encounters in the Dragon Sanctuary. The alpha dragons are especially impressive, and uh, when they finally come to blows in the big battle near the end, that is quite the sight. The action sequences are all very well done and a lot of fun to watch, and also, the 3D in this movie was fantastic, which makes sense. Animated movies usually do 3D very well, but overall, much like the first movie, this is, again, stuff that rivals Pixar's best work. And, yeah, it takes the great visual style of the first movie and just cranks everything up to 11. I really liked it. The visuals in this movie were fantastic. I cannot say enough good things about them. Everything in this movie just looks gorgeous. Uh... Everything you liked about the visual style in the first movie just cranked up to 11. They have even more fantastic designs for the various dragons. Everything's nice and bright and colorful all over the place. The alpha dragons are especially impressive just for the sheer size of these things. And when they finally clash in battle, it is awesome to watch. The action scenes overall were a lot of fun. And uh, the 3D looks especially good in this one, which you would figure from an animated movie, since they can just, you know, control the 3D and rendering, and they don't really have to worry about where they're pointing the cameras and all that. But, yeah, this, again, this rivals some of Pixar's best work. And it's a sight to behold, it truly is. Uh, I don't really have many complaints about this movie. I, I mentioned Drago's voice, which I thought was a bit over the top. Also... If they explained this, I somehow missed it, but I don't think they really explained how Drago managed to gain control of this huge freaking alpha dragon. I mean, gaining control of a lesser dragon? I can understand that. The man is a walking tank. He's a big, unholy badass of doom. I can see how this guy could intimidate a dragon into working for him. But the alpha is the size of a freaking mountain. How did he pull that off? There is a story there. There was a story in here somewhere, and I wanted to hear about this story, and the movie didn't really go into that. Uh, also, I think they could have done a bit more with Astrid. I mean, unlike most of Pickup's friends, she is not just a comedy side character. She is a very strong warrior woman in her own right, and, uh, and America Ferreira does a very good job with the voice, and I really just... She wasn't grossly underused or anything like that, but there was room for more. And maybe they're just saving her for the third movie. I hope so. And, and yes, there will be a third movie. They've already confirmed that. And I'm looking forward to that one as well. So, yeah, that's really the only complaints I have. I can honestly say I recommend this to pretty much everyone. And I would say it's definitely worth paying full price. And unless you have a, an aversion to 3D, yeah, go for this 3D surcharge. It's definitely worth seeing in 3D. It looks amazing. Uh, if you haven't seen the first movie, I would encourage you to, because it's also very good, but it's not absolutely necessary to see the first movie before you see this one. There are a couple of things that might throw you off, like you might wonder, why does Hiccup only have one leg? Because they, they never actually touch on why he only has one leg, that's all in the first movie, but, you know, apart from a few little things, there's really nothing you're gonna miss. It's it's still pretty easy to follow. So yeah, this officially comes out on Friday, and you all need to see it. All of you. Seriously. This was awesome. So go see it, and enjoy. Take care. and Vikings! Ah, enemies again! Oh. Ah, you know that doesn't wash out.